In a world full of distractions, there is one big question on every dog owner's lips. How do I become more than just the person holding the other end of the leash? We all get dogs with a dream in mind, a vision of the future. And if right now your everyday reality isn't quite that picture you had in mind, you are in the right place. It really doesn't have to be this way. You absolutely can and will be more to your dog than just the person who gets in between them and the world. The key is you need to be more sexy. More sexy than the neighbourhood cats. More sexy than the jogger in the park. More sexy than that half-eaten hamburger they just found on the floor. And yes, even more sexy than the dog across the road. I'm Tom. And I'm Lauren. Together, Together we're, we're Absolute dogs. dogs. And you're listening to the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast. Hello and welcome to the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast, the podcast that teaches you how to conquer dog training and behavior struggles, but also common struggles around dog ownership and caring for dogs. And that's what we're going to be covering today. Now, you might notice if you're watching us that we're in the kitchen. However, it's a bit of a weird place to be to talk podcast. We're mm. actually talking a very common struggle, a yep. very typical dog owner question, yep. and really a life-changing wellness and health question. Mm. Why is my dog maybe a little too fat? Why is my dog maybe a little too thin? Why do I struggle to keep weight on my dog? Why do I struggle to get weight off my dog? Yeah. Actually, we're talking weight management. We're talking mm. weight management with our furry friends and what we can do about it because this does affect longevity. This mm. does affect their overall wellness. This is important on the wellness map. Now, the cool thing is, is that there's so much that we can do. There's so much that we can change. There's so much that we have control over. And what we're going to dedicate this episode of the podcast to is actually each of those struggles. So can't get weight on my dog, can't get weight off my dog. And I think we'll start with can't get weight off my dog, because that's probably the most common um, of the um, of the struggles that, that, you know, people email in about. And, um, you know, many of you might be thinking, well, I'm now wondering, does my dog need to lose some weight? And that's probably the first place that we should start. And actually, what we've got for you is we've got a body condition score index. Mm -hmm. So you can look at it. It's either going to be on the screen or there'll be a link somewhere that you can access. Yeah. It's a body condition score chart. Now, when we look at the body condition score chart, you can see where your dog should be. Now, my dogs, I want them to sit between a four and a six and ideally a five. So both Tom and I look to see where our dogs are mm -hmm. and ideally a five. Sometimes my dogs are top end four, which for sports dogs, I kind of like. Sometimes they're bottom end six, which is often where I feel I sit personally. I quite like to be in the five zone with my dogs. I think the five zone is a nice space to be. But what is the five zone? Well, I'm going to read it out for you, actually, because it says ribs palpable without excess fat covering, waist observed behind the ribs when viewed from above, abdomen tucked up when viewed from the side. That is how we're looking yeah. um, at our dogs. And that is what we really want to consider uh, when we are in that space. Yeah. And so now that you've established if you maybe need your dog to lose some weight or not, actually, what can we do about it? Well, first things first is to just think about, well, you know, why do they, you know, what determines whether they put on weight or not? Well, it's down to how much they consume in terms of calories, how many calories do they expend throughout the day? And I guess what we've got to realize is throughout our dog's um, days, weeks, months, and years, there's going to be fluctuations in the demand on, their, on them physically. So their activity levels are going to change, um, and um, and with that, what they consume probably needs to change. Now, a really important seasonal element of that is um, in relation to your dog staying warm. So um, a lot of what the calories that your dog consume go into staying warm and keeping warm, thermoregulation. And so what we've got to realize is in the summer, especially in certain climates, or you know, if we're lucky in the UK and we have a, a really warm summer, the outside temperature is going to be very similar to your dog's body temperature. And so they're not going to need to use as much energy to actually get their body temperature um, up to the temperature that it should be. And with that, 
they then don't need to eat as much. Now, some dogs are really good, okay? And what they will do is they'll say, well, I'm, I don't need to eat as much, so I'm not going to eat as much, right? So they self-regulate. They do what yeah. we call self-regulation and they can regulate themselves. And then you get a blink or a bet. <laughs> that will just eat regardless of need, right? They'll just keep eating. They will not stop. You will see their stomach expand beyond the confines of their abdomen, right? There is that, but you know, sometimes, given the challenge, and it has happened with, with both of these dogs where they've managed to get access to oh, an God. insane amount I've, of food. I've got a story because some of you uh, will have seen us at, at big events and Blink has been at Crufts. Both Tom and I are often at Crufts and Blink has been also at Crufts. And at Crufts, she managed to get hold of three kilos of venison bones. Yeah. And of those three kilos, she ate... Well, it looked like 3.1, but she actually ate all three kilos of venison bones. I mean, literally, there was a bit of bone left, but not a lot. She ate the whole amount, and the next day she was competing in the Cruff Singles event. She still managed to pull off a second in that event. However, I know she'd have had a first if she hadn't have just eaten all of those bones. We left them, this is the really annoying thing, we left them in the bathroom, and we left Blink in a crate in the bedroom. This tells you exactly uh, why we understand naughty but nice dogs. We own them. Blink broke out of the crate, managed to open the bathroom door, and and got the bones. She literally yeah. was like a little burglar. She managed it really well and she was literally silent in her way in. Uh, however, what we're saying to you is they will do things like this yeah. and they will just eat into excess. And so you need to know if you've got one of these dogs that will not self-regulate, which I'll be honest is most dogs, they don't self-regulate. Then in the, certainly when it's warmer temperatures, we need to make sure that we um, feed them less. The other thing to be aware of, and I used to see this a lot as a vet, when it, when it um, gets really hot, well, you start to worry if your dog's not I eating, right? I was just gonna say that. I was like, people come in and say, he's gone off his food. He's gone and off I'm his like, food. He's just warm. He's, he's self-regulating. He's doing his job, right? Yeah. But you know, the, the, the key is to be aware actually about 70% of the calories that your dog consumes are gonna go into that thermoregulation, which is gonna change based on the outside temperature. So that's the, I guess the first thing is we maybe need to um, feed them a little bit less or maybe, you know, if their activity levels could be increased a little bit, um, then we might increase their activity. That doesn't necessarily mean walking them more. There are so many different ways that we can get our dogs active and, and get them expending calories. And yes, even thinking uses calories, right? So maybe they need to think a little bit more. <laughs> and equally think about what type of calories they're consuming. So for me, um, I, in fact, let's head over to the kitchen again. So we'll head over to the fridge. Uh, if I go into the fridge and I look at different types of treats, I might be using, um, oh, I had them in here earlier, but someone's nabbed them. They've been nabbed, they were in here earlier. Uh, veggies, we had some veggies chopped up. So there were some veggies chopped up and then I've got some cheese and then I've got some home baked food. And so the difference between, I would say the veggies, obviously least calories, the home baked next, and then the cheese very heavy and laden in. And just depends on what you are gonna be, um, what you're gonna be doing, who you're gonna be training and what they're gonna be getting for what. I think it does matter as to what calories you're, you're gonna be uh, consuming. So I do think about um, that as well because all of them are chopped into very similar sizes, whether that's the cheese, whether that's the home baked, or whether that's the um, whether that's the veggies uh, that have already been interesting. That those are the ones that have gone out the fridge first. So that's a good fridge, I'd say. In my fridge, it's the opposite. There are many veggies that sit there way too long, um, and so uh, yeah, it's it's definitely a, um, a something to consider. Now, the cool thing is, is that actually there are so many variations of things that we can feed our dogs, things that we can train our dogs with. And when you start to move um, your dog's your, your dog's daily food allowance or the things that you're going to feed them in a day a little bit more towards the fibrous vegetables like the likes of broccoli for example well actually then it's really cool because they're getting the bulk they're getting the chew but they aren't necessarily getting the energy with that or the calories with that so whether that whether you think about that within a, you know, a homemade treat recipe and you're thinking, okay, I could make this recipe as 80% meat and 20% vegetable, or I could make it 80% vegetable and 20% meat, you're probably gonna be thinking more towards incorporating really kind of fibrous vegetables as the majority of that treat. And for my dogs, for sure, I know that if I have a broccoli stalk, it's almost a consideration as to 
who that who is going to have that because mm. they all want it so everybody wants the broccoli stalk yeah. i wish i felt the same i love broccoli to be fair but i'm not so sure about broccoli stalks as, as exciting and these guys obviously raw so these are raw they don't get them cooked they get them raw and um, but they mm. literally will chew on that and they will chew and chew and chew and munch and munch and munch and it is fantastic for them like really really good deal for them and great for chewing all at the same time so for me it's a real win win yeah. to be able to use that so i uh, think about all your cruci cruciferous veg think about your cauliflower think about your broccoli uh, for my dogs those and um, we chop up the stalks and we use them as treats or uh, we will give them as a whole chew uh, and again if they don't eat things like this to a degree for me these are things I keep gently encouraging I play games with the food I throw the food I bowl the food when you watch dogs doing things oh god I'm throwing it everywhere when you watch dogs doing things like catching I don't think they always realize what they're about to catch they just want to play the game of catch and often they'll catch and it'll be broccoli and they'll be like okay broccoli um, and they start, start to enjoy the game because they enjoy the game of catch and they enjoy the game of playing with you and working with you and working for food and then suddenly they caught broccoli so it's fantastic because you kind of almost like it's a win-win yeah absolutely next thing that you want to think about is the water content of the food so the more water that's in the food the lower calorie that's going to be for per you know for the volume and so if you think about most wet foods well they're going to be about 60 to 70 percent water um, and so actually you've just expanded your dog's daily food allowance the amount that you can feed them while keeping the calories lower now that wet food might go into an aok9 squeezy tube um, and you've therefore got then this treat dis low calorie treat dispenser in thinking about um, your homemade treats, you might want to make them a little bit kind of more moist or wet than usual. Um, and in turn, again, we've now got this opportunity to kind of expand that those calories across more repetitions, right? On the flip side of that, you think about your dehydrated foods and they're effectively the opposite, yeah? So for example, if you were a bodybuilder and you were wanting to put on weight and you were wanting to have lots of um, protein and calories, well, guess what? You be thinking about as part of your diet is that dried jerky stuff that you can just eat you don't realize you're eating it well, but effectively I don't, know. I don't know i don't like it <laughs> i'm gonna be honest i don't like it. but um it's had all the water sucked out of it effectively um so that you're not having this bulk in your stomach and yet there's the same amount of calories in there and so being aware of certain types of diet that you might feed your dog it's going to make it even more challenging to keep the weight off them if they are you know if they are of that tendency I think the other thing is, of course, there are the odd rules, like dogs shouldn't have um, raisins and, and dogs shouldn't have grapes. And But on the whole, I think that be a little bit experimental as well when you're doing um, weight gain or weight loss in a dog. So for me, not to an extreme level, but I would say, okay, I'm going to change this for this, or I'm going to change this for this, just whilst we're in that period. So like Tom said, we're going to up the exercise, but we might also say, okay, I'm going to give you slightly less of your actual meat and I am going to add in some of this. And I think that is a nice way way to look at it and look at your lean proteins as well so for me uh, things like um i mean like look, like look at your, your meats like my chicken my turkey uh, versus my lamb my goose my duck and all of those sorts of things within foods and equally again uh, eggs being a fantastic source of a uh, nice like lean protein um and versus um other things that you could be giving them so look at your chews look at your content of your chews i know that these guys i don't know if we can just hover this way a little bit tom but like contents of your chews and think natural so so think about like natural um like animal parts rabbit ears or tripe sticks or um like chicken feet and trachea and things like that yes they are all dried however you look at something like um a dentist stick style treat and what's compacted into that um it's just a very different um makeup and so I would be considering what you're giving your dogs in addition to their food especially when you're looking at weight management mm -hmm. because these are the things that are so easily forgotten and yet it probably is probably one of the most important things to think about so things like dentist sticks often they'll say two three four a day mm -hmm. remember lots of products are trying to sell you a product and actually uh, when we look at calorie intake and we're trying to reduce weight then i think this can be a consideration remember all of the things that we're talking about being able to feel um, those ribs and they're palpable but not protruding being able to see a waistline being able to look over the top of the dog and be able to see down into that waist and see a, a change of shape mm -hmm. these are all really important and most importantly they are about your dog's health 
wellness, longevity. Uh, basically for us, this is great ownership of your dog. This yeah. is being a great dog owner. Now on the flip side, we've also got some dogs who struggle to put on weight. And I can certainly say Tokyo, my young male, non-castrated adult male, he was certainly in this category for a good sort of six to 12 months really from being about, I don't know, nine months mm -hmm. till almost two where you could feed him quite a lot, but he still looked quite quite light and slight. And actually, to a degree, I think he is supposed to be. Yeah, right, as a I young adolescent male. That's probably the first thing to say on it, is that actually, maybe that's how they're supposed to look. And um, maybe they're the normal ones and everybody else is not. And society not, right? has got <laughs> to a point where it's so expectant of the rounded dog that actually it forgets that these are healthy adolescent males. So be aware, adolescent looking for something to do, let's not go into what, um, considering lots of different opportunities that might be available to them, fairly interested in everything, um, quite an active type. So they are active and um, and he's an active breed anyway, he's Border Collie, but active age. It's very active sort of, they're, they're looking um, and they're busy and they're doing. And so for me, the more I looked at him and everyone was saying, he, he is slimmer. And I was like, I think he's supposed to be. I think he's supposed to be. He's got good muscle. He's, he's not hungry either. And I think this is always something that we should consider. If he's not hungry and he's not, there's nothing wrong with him and he's healthy, then should we be trying to force food no. into them? And then, you know, there are those dogs where we say, actually, maybe that isn't quite ideal for them. And then we might have to think about some strategies. Now, the first thing on this is if it's not ideal for them, then it could well be that the protein source that they're being fed is not agreeing with them. It could be that they have an intolerance to that protein source. They have uh, maybe an inf a mild inflammatory bowel disease um, that has no other symptoms symptoms other than the fact that they're not putting on weight and they're below condition. And so um, thinking about trying a different protein source um, or what some dogs that have this low grade inflammatory bowel disease, um, they actually, as soon as they're switched to what's called a hydrolyzed protein diet, where that protein is broken up into pieces in such a way that their body can't have this effectively this allergic response to it um, and reject that, then um, you find that they put on weight and they're all of a sudden an ideal body condition. And so this is one that working with your working with your vet is one that can be investigated, whether it be through diet trial um, or whether it be through investigations, it's one to explore. Next thing to be aware of, having ruled out that, is we might say, well, maybe this is a dog where they need to have more frequent feeding um, of a... Um, of a, a smaller amount, yeah? So the cool thing is a ditch the bowl is gonna achieve that. Um, and the other thing that we might want to consider is are there some sneaky ways to add calories to their daily food allowance that will help them to put on weight and reach their ideal condition. Now, the easiest one to do is actually an oil. So um, whether it be that you're using homemade treats, you can add oil to the homemade treats process. Whether it be that you're using their kibble daily food allowance, chuck a couple of tablespoons of oil into um, the bag of daily food allowance, give it a shake and that then can be used and they're Maybe getting it. they have a small amount of supplement in something. Mm -hmm. So uh, you saw in, uh, I was mixing up some, some supplements and I pop some oil in there. Mm -hmm. Those are things that you can sneakily get in and pack in those calories, whether it's omega-3s or whether it's coconut oil or any other type of oil that you deem appropriate for your dog. All of these can be added in as a, an easy sort of add in and win. Equally, something else that we absolutely must consider, and I know Tom touched on it with um, whether your dog does have any mild inflammatory sort of bowel. Actually, how are your dog's stools on a day to day basis when you've got a dog who's a little bit light? I know that um, that's something that we can be looking at all of the time with our dogs. And when it comes to weight management and food and what we're feeding and what we're doing, I would say that stools are something as a dog owner, you do get a little bit of of, yeah, right? Absolutely. Some people borderline obsessed. You know what? I would say we, we flip between the two, mm. um, but you do kind of look, right? Yeah. You, you look and you go, oh, that's good, or that's not. Yeah, absolutely. And if you've got a dog that has very inconsistent stools or consistently not great stools, um, paired with this picture of um, them being slightly below condition, speak to your vet 
um, ex, you know, explore um, that avenue. Diet trials either will form the first step or the second step of that. Um, and then the third thing that you might want to think about is supplementing your dog's diet actually with something that's going to support the lining of their gut, something like ProBio K9. Um, and, um, and what you what you might find is in supporting their gut better to do its job, the gut can do the job and they're all of a sudden of ideal body condition and their stools are much better. Generally speaking, happy stool, happy gut, happy dog. Um, and that's really what we're looking to achieve. Now, um, if just going back to the dogs that, um, no, actually, sticking with these dogs, there's one more thing to say on this. If your dog has um, inconsistent stools in that they're often quite runny um, and they, they're struggling to put on weight, be aware that it might, that would kind of add to my concern that, the, that they're maybe not on the right protein source. Um, because one sign that a, a protein source is kind of borderline with your dog is when you feed them too much, the stool deteriorates. Feed them below a certain amount and it's all fine. And you've got two options there. You could say, okay, I might try a different protein source or I need to make sure that they don't get too much food in one sitting. And we've got dogs like this where they get, okay. if they get too much food, the stool will tell you so. Um, and the challenge is, is it's almost like the, the food has just gone straight through their gut. They've not absorbed those nutrients. The, the stool will even be a different color to the regular stool. It's like the gut has just gone, I'm shocked. I don't know what to do, oh, right? Um, and so actually then experimenting with the size of the meal to, to really make sure that this food that you're spending money on and taking great care in choosing, actually your dog can utilize it because it's been delivered in the right way. And Again, that's where ditch the bowl is going to really help. Last thing to consider when you've got a dog who is underweight and you're trying to gain weight or add um, condition for any reason, actually, how are they spending all of their day? Because I had an owner like this recently and her dog was spending the majority of the day running in circles around the garden, um, chasing things, spinning after things and spent a lot of time in the garden because they were a little bit difficult with the family environment. So um, herdy, nippy, bitey. Mm. Uh, and so they had spent a lot of time in the garden because it was easier for supervision. Actually, that dog was in the winter getting a little bit cold uh, and in the summer was running around like a lunatic mm. chasing birds. And actually what we realized was uh, that possibly needs to be considered when it comes to the utilised calories, yeah. really. The calories were just way higher than they were anticipating. Yeah. And, and they were feeding uh, on the back of a packet. Again, that's probably a great point. Let's not feed to the packet, let's feed mm. to the dog. And both Tom and I feed across a seven day period. So we look and we think, okay, Everest has got a competition at the weekend. At competitions, we tend to feed her more, not because she needs it, because we're rewarding everything mm. and we're treating her for everything and we're rewarding every maneuver that she does. And then the Monday, she probably has a lot less treats, a lot less, when I say treat, I mean her dinner, a lot less food. Uh, and then on the Tuesday, a bit more, because we start training again. The Wednesday is non-training day. The Thursday is a training day. The Friday is a travel day, so not so much food. And then Saturday and Sunday, she's heavy again. Mm -hmm. So when I say heavy, I mean, not like that. I mean, she's heavy work. So we feed according to workload. We don't feed according to it's Monday, she gets 300 grams. It's Tuesday, she gets 300 grams. It's Wednesday, she gets 300 grams. Hang on a second, let's wake up to this. Why are we feeding her the same every day when her her energy output and her needs are different. We've got to wake up to that. I think it's important. Now, we've covered a lot and many of you will be thinking, well, I think my dog's ideal body condition, but I've learned something that I want to implement, which is brilliant. We want to hear what, you, what you're taking away from that. What's your light bulb? What's your takeaway? What's the thing that you're going to implement? You might do that by emailing in at ask at absolute-dogs.com. That's ASK at absolute-dogs.com. You might do that in the form of leaving a review on iTunes or Spotify or wherever else you listen. Or you might do that by posting in one of the Facebook groups. That was this episode. You definitely, definitely, definitely want to share it. We want to know that you share this worldwide. Just like Tom said, it was a, it was a great episode, right? Like yeah. I feel that people are going to want to know this worldwide. Yeah. And so make sure to share and we will see you next time. And remember, stay, stay sexy. sexy. Stop right there, Game Changer. We have something very exciting to tell you about if you struggle with stressful walks right now. So pulling your dog, yanking your arm out of its socket, just basically, it's painful, right? 
Now, it's a struggle that you want to transform. You want to go from pulling on lead like a train to loose leash walking prince or princess, and we've got a solution for you. It is just £27. It's a mini course that literally is going to be your zero to hero of loose leash walking. Day by day, we're going to be showing you the games and skills and strategies that you are going to need to implement to transform your dog's leash behavior in the next two weeks. This is a complete package you get to keep it for life yes for life and it's just 27 pound to you access it anywhere keep it for life no equipment required and all you've got to do is go to absolutedogs.me forward slash stop pulling and yes it is just 27 pounds game changers